And so the Lib Dems are pledging to take the fight to the Conservatives and the so-called blue wall mm. of traditional Tory seats in the South. You've got a blue wall there, haven't you? I have a blue wall here, yeah. especially now, assembly. This isn't our idea. This is the Lib Dems' idea, because, as I understand it, this was in the goodie bag uh, this week... Yes. ..or is in the goodie bag for the Lib Dem party conference. So Sir Ed Davey uh, joins us now from the conference in Bournemouth. Very good morning to you. Morning. As we talk to you, shall we see good if morning. Richard I'm glad can... you got the blue wall. Yeah. Can, shall we see if Richard can chip away at the blue wall for now, this you? Is, this is not to display any political allegiance of any no. kind. This is purely for television demonstration yeah. purposes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, Richard. There we I'll go. try again. Really Hang on. Bang that wall down. Is it going to be that us. easy? I think that's, that's the idea. Look, so Ed Davey, very good morning it to you. It can be done. What, what? It can be done. What are you hoping is going to knock down that blue wall for you? <clears throat> well, I hope our policies on things like the cost of living, where people are really struggling with their bills, and also the NHS, where people are waiting for GP appointments, have long hospital waiting times. And what I'm saying today is, for Liberal Democrats, we see those two policies together. If we can really invest in our NHS, it will help our economy. There are so many people waiting for so long. They can't get back to work because they can't get a GP appointment, perhaps to sort out a back pain or a frozen shoulder or to deal with some uh, depression. If we can sort out these weights that people endure, we can get people back to work uh, in the factory, in the office, and that will boost our economy. So those policies on the cost of living and the NHS are what I hope will persuade people okay. to vote Liberal Democrat. Well, uh, let me tell you that um, you have scored the uh, first hits in the blue wall because you are on our programme this morning as leader of the Liberal Democrats, whereas <laughs> the Conservative minister who is doing interviews this morning is not on our programme for some reason that I don't understand. So congratulations, that's the first ship into the blue wall. <laughs> but I do want to ask you how you would it, pay... Can I say, it, Suzanne, yeah? it's, not, it's not the first one. OK, what's the first one? It's not the first one. We've had four by-election wins. We've had four by-election wins that oh, have knocked yeah, down the first I'm talking about on our programme this morning. So let's, yeah. see, let's see how you get, get on okay, with the rest of it. Okay. How are you going to pay for all this? Well, let me tell you one of our big uh, policies this week uh, of free personal care so uh, people can afford to be cared in their homes. Yeah. Uh, that does come with a big £5 billion price tag, but a lot of it is paid for by savings that you get automatically from the NHS. The NHS is suffering at the moment because there's lots of people who are in hospital who are ready to be discharged, but they don't have a care package so they can go home or even to a care home. If we can invest in care so that care package is there, people can be discharged from hospital. That saves a lot for the NHS, and it means people can actually be cared for in their home. We reckon of that five billion tag, three billion of it could come in uh, savings for the NHS and on spending on care homes. So that's, I think, a really sensible policy where you're spending to save and improve the NHS with a care policy. That's a sort of practical, okay, well, sorry, well thought through things maths, that Liberal Democrats are putting forward. My maths suggests you're two billion short. Five billion is the policy yeah, you've got. Yeah, let me come to that. And I'm, you're going to save three billion. Yes. I mean, firstly, you've got to get the social care package in place before you can discharge all of those people who are in hospital. So you've got to spend yep. first and then hope to save a, a proportion of it and you are still two billion short. That does not make any sense. Yeah. Well, let me, let me do some more math for you to help, to help you, because um, I, I do want to deal with that shortfall. Uh, we have argued, uh, as we have at every general election, that we will put forward a cost of manifesto, which will set out all our policies and explain where the money comes from. But in this parliament, I've given a flavour of that. So we've talked about those organisations and businesses that have been making huge profits, doing really well, when other people are struggling with the cost of living, and we've suggested some taxes on those uh, organisations. So uh, Liberal Democrats were the first to talk about a windfall tax on the oil and gas companies when they're, they're making tens of billions of pounds of profit after President Putin invaded Ukraine and that shoved up world oil and gas prices. We've also talked about reversing the uh, tax cuts that the Conservatives have given to the banks. They've given the banks since 2015 
uh, tax cuts of £4 billion a year. So there's just two examples where Liberal Democrats have been the first party to say, here's some money from organisations that can really afford it when we're struggling. And you know, if we can invest that money in the NHS, in the care policy that I've described, we can get the right. benefits for the NHS and those people okay. who, are, who are going without care and boost our economy. Sir Ed. Um, my experience of interviewing you on this programme in recent years is that, on the whole, you tend to answer the question, which is unusual with British politicians these days. So I want to put that theory to the test, cos you've been slithering around on this question over the weekend, and I had a little bet with myself that you'd give us a straight answer here. So here we go. Uh, Leila Moran, your foreign affairs uh, spokesperson, has said categorically at a fringe meeting that the Lib Dems want and intend to rejoin the EU. Do you? If, if I voted Liberal Democrat in the next election, would I be voting for the party that would try and get us back into the EU? What Leila Moran and I have said uh, at this conference is we know that that's not on the table currently. We know that we need to start by rebuilding our relationship with Europe, and we know that's going to take some time. Uh, the Conservatives so soured our relationships with France and Germany and the whole of, uh, of Europe um, that, that, that they don't want to really a engage in that discussion either. So we, we've got a, a, a very, very detailed policy on Europe. Uh, we have a, what's called a four-step programme to rebuilding that relationship, which starts by engaging the people, which I think is the mature way, rather than shouting, as the Conservatives seem to do. And it, it involves tearing down some of those trade barriers, getting rid of some of those regulations that are shoving up costs in our supermarkets and undermining growth in our country. Does that mean going country. back into the single what, market? How Liberal Democrats will approach this whole... So, uh, uh, well, again, are, are that's not on the table. Then, what, 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 Moran, what? Are you saying that your foreign affairs spokesman was speaking out of turn then when she said, and I quote, we want to rejoin? Mm -hmm. There's nothing about it being off the table. We want to rejoin. We want, as part of it, to get back, as Susanna points out, into the single market. We recognise in order to do that, we have to do stuff to get into the relationship. So she's going much further than you are, and she's your foreign affairs spokesman. Well, to be fair, Richard, um, what you've not quoted is all the things that she also said. And I know you want to be fair to your viewers, so you give a, a full explanation of what Leila has said. And Leila's been the architect, actually, of building this patient, gradual process, which uh, we think will, is in our national interest. But, you know, we're in total agreement that uh, Britain, once it's rebuilt its relationship, uh, once we've uh, rebuilt that trust, we do want to be back at the heart of Europe. We want to be engaged in uh, our future uh, and put Britain's national interests right at the heart of our economic policies, our policies on security. One of our major criticisms, Richard, of the Conservative deal is it's undermined the way we deal and work with our European partners to tackle serious crime, tackle international crime gangs. So the Conservatives, by their botched relationships with Europe have meant that we're not tackling the worst criminals in our world. That is shocking. Uh, they have made people in our country not just less, less prosperous, le less well-off, they've made them less safe. Okay. That so, is Ed, David, a scandal for any government Can I, can I just interrupt? Because Richard had made the point that he wanted a straight answer to the question. Leila Moran, as Richard quoted, used the word... Because you've said... You haven't said everything else she said. But she specifically used the four words... We want to rejoin. You've used a whole lot of other words, including gradual process and be back at the heart of Europe, and you're talking about, you know, cooperation on crime. Do you want to rejoin the EU? Or rather like your councillor colleague in the kayak <laughs> uh, in the last couple of days, has Leila Moran tipped you into <laughs> the water on this? <laughs> Well, I, I'm glad you liked uh, another uh, of our photo stunts, like the blue wall you've got in the, in the uh, studio. But I, I think I have given you a very straight answer. Do you want to rejoin, to it because Sir Ed Davey? If you listen to what Leila, well, if you listen to what Leila and I'm I have been saying, I'm listening to you. Is it a yes or really a no? Clear that though, yeah, if it's currently not on the table, and you know that, I know that, Leila knows that, the whole country knows that, what is on the table is a chance to rebuild our relationship, rebuild that trust, which has been so soured by the Conservatives, get rid of that red tape, engage in helping uh, our police and our security services work with our European neighbours to catch serious criminals, but enabling Brexit young people was all about to be able getting to rid of the red tape. So study. were you saying, no, we don't want to rejoin the EU? No. S S Susanna, isn't that interesting? You're right. 
That's what the Conservatives said, but it actually hasn't. It's made red tape worse. So you want the to rejoin? The awful trade deal that... No, the awful trade deal that Boris Johnson did has smothered our economy at our ports uh, and our airports in red tape. It's been the worst increase in bureaucracy and in cost to business in a generation. Conservatives should, should hang their heads in shame. It's shackling our okay. businesses. So th th surely any practical government will want to deal with that first, and Liberal Democrats will, so we can boost our economy. So we've got several ways to boost our economy. Oh, Get rid of the red tape caused by Johnson's special is. deal. And also... Oh, well, I'm sorry. Well, I, I do look over the tapes, because I think I'm being really clear with you. <laughs> we, we, we're passionate uh, about okay. working with imagine our European you won partners. The election. We want to right. be at the Ed, heart Sir, of Davey, Europe. Sir, imagine you won the election. Would you then rejoin the EU? Well, uh, winning the election is certainly what uh, we are hoping in all those seats that we're against the Conservatives, in those blue wall seats with that lovely blue wall you have in uh, the studio. We want to knock loads of those down. And if we can do that, if we can knock lots of those uh, Conservative MPs out and get Liberal Democrat MPs, I think we're in a better position for our NHS, for right. our economy, and that means we can develop our relationship, get rid of the red tape, and start being a grown-up government. I've okay. never known our country so badly governed under these Conservatives. We have to get them out. All All right. Right, sir Ed. Uh, more questions, but no time to ask them. We'll have, a, have, have another crack next time. Enjoy your conference. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank right. You. Yeah, you, thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Stay dry. Um, you yeah. laid a bet at the beginning of that interview. Straight answer to a straight question. Uh, he gave it. He did. Mm, I, he gave an arguably comprehensive answer. I'm not sure it was straight <laughs> uh, because look, we know we we know that the liberal heart beats in in, in Europe. Yes. We know that. Uh, and as you say, if they were to incredibly raise their poll from 11 percent to 50 percent, of course they'd bring us back into Europe if they possibly could. But he can't say that. No. Yeah. So. You I lost. Think, uh, it wasn't bad. I've, I've, I've had I've had woolier answers. Yeah. Politicians. And how's your blue wall doing? Oh well, it's fallen over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says. It's a metaphor. <laughs>